Hey there, before we jump into today's video, I just want to do a quick plug that we are in the final week of my Creature Compendium Kickstarter. So for those of you who don't know what this is, it's an original Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition monster manual comprised of a bunch of creatures that I've made here on YouTube and on Twitch. It's a really awesome book. It's made by myself and a couple friends. So we're kind of a small independent team and we're pretty close to hitting our goal. Like we're over halfway there. So anything you can help with like a dollar, five dollars, even just sharing the link would be a huge help. Thanks again. And let's get into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. We are on episode 95, everybody. We have five left. Can you believe it? We only have five left after this. I can't believe it. It's just, it's so crazy that we're so close to being done. So today we're continuing the Chinese Zodiac, Lunar Zodiac animals and doing a horse dragon. I think we have maybe about, oh God, three... I think three or four more Zodiac uh, dragons left. So I think that's gonna occupy a lot of the final five, but I have another like fun one or two mixed in there for our uh, final couple. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. And uh, yeah, I really cannot believe <laughs> we're already on 95. It's nuts. But yeah, anyway, so for today's dragon, uh, I took a lot of influence from uh, Kirin Designs. Um, I love like the cool, like koi dragon horse design combos that Kirin's are. And, uh, I kind of just wanted to run with that as the base inspiration and then add kind of my own flares and a little bit of a different look compared to some of the traditional, traditional, uh, Kirin designs. I added like, uh, kind of a different type of horn. I guess I've seen a couple of different horn structures on Kirin's. It kind of varies. Um, but I wanted to really accentuate the horse features, but also make it very dragon-like. I've talked about this in previous videos, but a couple of my like uh, earlier dragon videos, especially with some of the other Zodiacs, I've always been afraid of making them too much like the animal and not dragon enough. And I feel this one was a nice in-between. Um, I did lean heavier on the horse side, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I think I've started to like, not worry as much uh, with these dragons. I just like creating a cool creature design and I feel it still does fall under like the idea of a dragon. So after those initial uh, rough sketches and like concepting was done, it was time to jump into the final big piece. So I wanted kind of a really dynamic pose. Uh, I've been trying to push my poses a little bit more when possible. It's just, one of the things I've always struggled with with these dragon videos is like the space constraints. I'm very happy that I did all of these traditionally on uh, paper because it's nice to kind of break up what medium you're using, especially for your eyeballs. <laughs> your eyeballs will super appreciate it if you don't always look at a screen. So it's nice to like break it up and like maybe work in a sketchbook for a bit or do a project like this and make it all traditional. And it also helped me improve just in general at getting better at like marker usage. I feel like they was like, okay, when I first started the series, but I for sure have grown a lot when it comes to, uh, marker rendering and blending and such. But yeah, so like I said, one of the main, I guess, struggles with these is the space constraint. It is a little bit hard sometimes to fit the whole dragon on a page or at least most of it. And I know one of the things I've always struggled with, even on my digital work, is I usually need to move my drawing or subject around the page because I'll start somewhere and then the whole thing ends up in like a corner or like at the very bottom or top of the page. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of happens, especially when you're just like trying to figure out the whole body at once. Sometimes you just start in a weird spot. Like I'll start the head a little bit too close to one side of the page and then bam, there's the whole body. So. This one kind of suffers from that syndrome a bit of being in the top corner. Um, it still fit and I didn't squish anything to make it fit, but it's not very centered, <laughs> but it's still really fun to draw. And like I said, I want to make some kind of cool dynamic galloping pose. Like I was thinking of it, maybe this is kind of like the mid gallop through the air pose. <laughs> That's at least what I'm thinking. I thought that'd be like really cool. And then this also shows off a lot of the detailing that I wanted with this dragon. 
I wanted to show off like all the scales and spines as well as some of the designs that I did on the legs and then just really wanted to leave some room for like the really cool long tail and mane and all of the like accents that I put around this uh, creature's design. So now with the line art done, it was time to jump into color. And this part, I actually got a little like nervous for because <laughs> uh, I, I kept going back and forth with what I wanted. I knew I wanted like a nice gold accent. I was thinking about doing that for like the horns and like some parts of the scales and the hooves, maybe like the stomach scales. I just was going back and forth on that. But then the primary color, I was like really leaning towards some cool colors like greens, purples and blues. But I was like, I don't know what I want to do because like in my brain, uh, for those of you, I guess here in the States or I don't know if, yeah, there's Michael's in Canada too. Um, but the Michael's arts and crafts store, they used to have these, uh, well, actually they still have them. It's not a used to have, uh, they have these like little plastic resin, like toys there, um, where it would be like dragons and unicorns and like a lot of majestic and mythical creatures. And I remember one of them was some type of like underwater seahorse type of thing. Uh, but it was like more of like a, no, it wasn't even like a Kelpie. It was like a full body horse, but with like the purpley blue colors and had fins. It's like on the tip of my brain because <laughs> it's, I haven't looked at it in a long time. I used to love those toys uh, when I was younger. I always wanted them, but they were always, crazy overpriced, but I would look at them every time my mom took me to Michael's. Um, and yeah, there was one that was just this like crazy, like rainbow, not even rainbow, but like multicolor, uh, horse type of creature. It reminds me of, you know, those cars that depending on what angle you look at, the paint changes color. So this horse was like going between green, purple, and blue. And that's what was in my brain. And I'm like, I kind of want to replicate that. I want to replicate that with this dragon. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but we're going to figure it out. So what I did was for the mane, I wanted to do that kind of green to blue look that I was talking about for that, that horse creature. Um, and I do really like how this turned out. The, the transition from the green to the blue is probably my favorite part of this creature. Um, I was very hesitant about it cause I was like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna turn out good. I've never tried this fully like on a dragon before and with marker, like in Photoshop or Clip Studio, you're like, okay, well I'll do like a gradient tool and select certain things. But I'm like, well now I gotta figure it out for like markers. And I think it got the point across, I think I could have executed it a little bit better or different, but I was still pretty happy with the color transition. And then for the body, I was thinking about doing a similar color transition with having those purples go into the blues, but then I really just liked having the whole body be this really awesome purple color. So I just went ahead and went with just an all purple body and then just left those blues and greens to the main and then later on on those like dragon wing fin type of things. So yeah, overall, I'm very pleased with the color choice and these colors in general. Um, I had a lot of fun creating this one and I'm super proud of it. I just love the pose and like the design overall, I think is really fun. And I think it was a good combination of a horse and a dragon. And then, yeah, for sure it had a lot of Kieran influence. I just couldn't help myself. I'm like, it's just too good to pass up like a cool, like Kieran dragon horse combo. But let's go ahead and look at last month's dragons for the rainbow dragons, a normal ADN. This one was nuts. I had to feature it because wow, all the detailing you put into it was crazy. And I love how you utilize the rainbow. Attritive. This one is really cool too, like the scale of the dragon plus all the colors that you used and how you use them on the creature design was also really awesome. And there were so many cool rainbow dragons. You guys like ran with this prompt and it was so awesome to see them all. I loved them. They were so diverse and so different. So if you want to enter this month's Year of the Horse Dragon, make sure to post it on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag KM100Dragons or you can join our Discord community. I have a link down in the description below. We have a dedicated channel where you can upload and post your dragons. And we're hosting uh, basically seasonal art challenges. We're doing two every couple of months. Uh, so if you wanna check those out and join our little community of 
monster lovers and nerds and just like hang out with us, come check out our Discord. But either way, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, join our community, and finally check out my Kickstarter. I'd really appreciate it if you could support that. Anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.